Good morning, everybody. I'm Verlin Olson. I'm the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development. And I'm really pleased to be here today with all of you and with my colleague Ron Casey, the MLA, and uh, uh, we have a few other people with us as well, uh, including uh, Mayor Ivan Brooker, Barry right here. Thanks for letting us come to your town and I, some of your councillors are here as well, I understand. Uh, thank you all for being here. We're in a perfect setting really here in uh, the McKay Ice Cream Plant uh, to talk about rural tourism and we have a number of other stakeholders uh, who have an interest in, did I say rural tourism? That's, that's certainly part of what we're doing here, but it's even broader than that, it's rural development, rural economic development which includes rural tourism and we have a number of stakeholders here uh, who have an interest in rural development and have been working hard uh, counseling us giving us advice and uh, we're uh, we're here to uh, make a few announcements today um, McKay ice cream is a great place to do this because this is a rural Alberta success story uh, rural Alberta business started some 66 years ago I believe it was uh, in a small town and here it is very active very profitable and very well known uh, and uh, we're very happy to be here to talk about rural economic development and I want to thank the McKay family and in particular Megan and uh, Mark and Sean the plant manager thanks for letting us come to your plant uh, you can hear the uh, compressors running here but they actually did kind of stop the operation to make room for us and allow us to come in here today. So we really appreciate your hospitality, you and all of your staff. Uh, I also have to thank and acknowledge some of my colleagues who worked on our Rural Economic Development uh, Action Plan. There were four of them. Hector Goudreau, our chair of the Rural Caucus. I should say, unfortunately, none of them could be here today because they're all very busy working. Uh, but Hector uh, was uh, on the committee as well as Bridget Pasteur, Ken Lemke and Jackie Fanske and I really owe them a, a debt uh, for the hard work they put in. They toured the province talking to people from a cross-section of uh, organizations and interests about what uh, rural economic development means and what we need to do to support it and so uh, that's what we're going to be talking about here today and interestingly just uh, last week the premier uh, was announcing a small business strategy and this really echoes that small business strategy and it also builds on uh, the vision that was expressed in June when we rolled out our economic uh, framework so uh, now it's my great pleasure to introduce to you the MLA for Calgary Foothills. Uh, and uh, I, the first guy that gets to do that kind of in an official capacity, so I'm very, very proud to do that. And uh, Premier Prentice, uh, I just want to say that you have been an inspiration to me and all of uh, our colleagues in caucus. When you think about the spring and summer that you've had, and here he is the morning after and he's at work and he's talking about rural Alberta. So I really want to express my thanks. So Premier. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, Well, thank you very much, uh, Verlin, and uh, it's great to be here. And Mark and Megan, thank you very much. Uh, Karen and I have been here often before, although we've never been in the back part of the operation. We just saw this sort of inexhaustible supply of ice cream coming out on the front side. So uh, thank you very much for having us here. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, before I uh, became the, uh, the Premier, I worked a lot with uh, rural industry and uh, small business, agribusiness across the province. And so uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And through our, uh, our work together, it was always clear to me that um, rural industry, rural businesses play an indispensable uh, role in our province's economy. Uh, you know the statistic, $77 uh, billion dollars of, of GDP. And another thing that was um, abundantly clear was the incredible business acumen and innovation that uh, thrives within places such as McKay's, which represent Alberta's newest entrepreneurs. And so we're pleased to be here on that account because our hosts here today 
are perfect examples of what I'm talking about. They are uh, Alberta's new pioneers, and they look beyond uh, their existing borders for markets. They also look uh, outside the conventional uh, in terms of their enterprises. And more than that, they look inside the communities in which they are grounded um, for their labor needs and for their strength and for their sense of purpose. And it's for that reason that, um, you know, these are all the values which we have in this province. I've spoken over, uh, over this morning. Uh, I did a great deal of media this morning and uh, I spoke about the sense of hope and optimism that characterizes us as Albertans and we find this uh, across the province. We especially find it in rural Alberta and we find it in businesses such as this. Um, and so we're interested in fostering an environment that uh, will enable these entrepreneurs to do uh, the very best that they can and to be the best that we can at helping them. And so that's why um, I'm so pleased to be here along with uh, Minister Olson. And I, and I should say, um, Minister Olson has spoken about uh, Hector Goodrow and the work that he did in terms of uh, the economic action plan that we're speaking of. But I just want to uh, commend the minister who has been just an, <laughs> an outstanding and outspoken representative um, for rural Alberta, for the agricultural community, uh, for all of the areas of responsibility that he has as our Minister of Agriculture. And so just join with me in saying thank you to Minister Olson. So today, uh, as a result of uh, the Minister's hard work and the work of uh, a good committee of, of uh, MLAs and citizens, uh, help of uh, a lot of Albertans across the province, we are starting down a new economic pathway for rural Alberta. We're going to walk that, uh, that journey together, uh, shoulder to shoulder with industry, shoulder to shoulder with the businesses uh, that this plan speaks to. And we're going to increase the economic development capacity uh, of rural Alberta uh, through the announcements that are being made today and those that will follow. Uh, serving uh, firstly to increase the uh, capacity, the existing capacity of programs that we have to make sure that the existing programs better serve the needs of uh, rural Alberta. And secondly, uh, creating new opportunities for rural Albertans to succeed uh, with new initiatives. And one of the things that I like most about uh, this plan is that this plan was developed by Mr. Olson, Mr. Goodrow, together with rural Albertans. It was developed uh, in a series of uh, lengthy meetings and consultations and collaborations across the province. The MLA Task Force on Rural Economic Development brought together people from the business community, uh, municipal leaders, people from the post-secondary communities uh, as well, and uh, many, many people from across rural Alberta. And these, of course, are the people that know best. I have an old uh, an adage that I've relied on in my time in public life, which is that you don't get excellence in public policy unless you talk to people. And so this policy was based on talking to people, and that's uh, one of the reasons that I know it's going to succeed. So when I um, refer to the Rural Economic Development Action Plan, I'm talking about it as our plan developed collaborative, collaboratively, and one that rural Albertans from across the province have had direct input on, and one that they're going to uh, work together in the implementation of. Now, I'm not going to uh, itemize uh, all of the actions um, in the plan. There are copies for you to pick up, and it's also posted online, and I would encourage everyone to uh, take the time uh, to read it. There are copies, uh, certainly, that are available here. But as you do, you'll see that the action plan, uh, the intent is to build on rural Alberta success in five key areas, and I'll just elaborate those. Firstly, um, developing industry and business in rural Alberta. Secondly, uh, improving access to capital, improving access to capital for rural entrepreneurs and businesses. We're going to speak about that specifically this morning. Thirdly, labor needs, uh, an importance of attracting and retaining the workers that are needed, empowering entrepreneurs who are already there, making sure that we have the labor capacity uh, to expand the business basis uh, uh, in rural Alberta. Fourthly, infrastructure, uh, boosting the, uh, the capacity of Alberta's rural business infrastructure, and there'll be more said about that in the days ahead. 
And fifthly, the importance of collaboration, the importance of working together, not just as businesses, but as government, as regional governments working together across boundaries to collaborate to make sure that we get the results that we need. So I'm proud to say that we are putting this plan in place, uh, effective today, effective immediately. Now, one of the first uh, steps forward, Minister Olson uh, will speak to this, our very first action helps um, family farms, small feedlots, and uh, new and young farmers and families who are members of the feeder associations. We are changing the feeder association guarantee regulation so that producers can access more competitive financing, allowing for greater flexibility in purchasing cattle for feeder operations, which will allow them to take advantage of the high and strong prices that we have uh, in the feeder cattle markets. And without this kind of uh, alternative financing and the availability of it, many of the operations in this province, uh, family farms, small feedlot operations, would be running at half capacity through a time uh, of robust prices. And so uh, we're going to make these changes effective immediately. And this will allow producers to be able to finance uh, as many animals as they normally do and to increase uh, that capacity to take advantage of strong market circumstances. The second announcement um, that we're going to make today is the doubling of funding for the Agricultural Opportunity Fund. Uh, this is a $3.5 million program. It's funded under the, the endowment, the Agricultural and Food Innovation Endowment uh, to support sustainability in agricultural industries through uh, applied research. And so these are just uh, the first of many positive actions at a grassroots level that are going to come to fruition as a result of this action plan that Minister Olson uh, has created and will be uh, executing. Now I want to be clear uh, in closing, Alberta is a, is a great place to do business, but we need to make sure that we are always carrying forward to make it even better and so that we have the best climate in the North America for small business. And that applies to the businesses that are grounded in rural Alberta and which are fundamentally the strength of our rural economy. And so by unveiling this plan today, uh, together with the new small business strategy that we announced last week, uh, we are putting the pieces uh, in place uh, that will save small business time, that will give them uh, better access uh, to government services, business advice, and in particular government information, and will also provide them on an ongoing basis with a stronger voice in government. And so this will empower um, rural Alberta, will empower Alberta's grassroots. And what we're trying to do is to recognize the unique nature of every region of the province and emphasizing the importance of collaboration of all of us working together to build uh, the rural economic base uh, of this province. We'll be engaged in the sharing of knowledge with one another. And what we're going to do is to bring together businesses uh, post-secondary institutions, non-profit organizations, and all sectors so that we are walking together in the same pathway and knowing that we can do that, imagine, uh, just imagine what we can achieve. And so it's a pleasure to be here today with some of uh, rural Alberta's new pioneers. They know uh, what's possible. They know what can be achieved if we focus on removing the barriers that currently slow down entrepreneurs in this province. And what our government intends to do is to give those entrepreneurs the tools to move forward and then we intend to get the heck out of the way so that business can succeed and prosper in this province which is the best place in North America to do business. So thank you very much Minister Olson. I'll turn the podium back to you. Thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Premier. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, once we finish the formal part of uh, this gathering, we have an opportunity, all of us, and I know a lot of you guys came for the ice cream, uh, to, to go over and see the, the front end of this operation over on Main Street, uh, historic, beautiful uh, Main Street of Cochrane. And I, I, it was a little bit of a slip of the tongue earlier when I mentioned rural tourism, but it, uh, it bears repeating that uh, this is a great example of, of an, uh, an enterprise that brings people to town and, and uh, does create tourism in this community 
People come out on weekends for ice cream. They can't uh, resist uh, pulling off the highway on their way to and from Banff to come in and have some ice cream. And so we have that opportunity to go have a little bit of a look uh, and taste uh, after we're done here. And I again want to thank uh, the McKay uh, family and uh, all of their staff for welcoming us. Uh, I was not suggesting you're getting free ice cream though. Uh, <laughs> But uh, now it, we do have an opportunity for some questions and answers, so um, we'll uh, turn it over to uh, Emily behind you there, and um, off right. we go. We'll open it up on the floor right now. Any questions? Premier, uh, the Wild Rose leader says your government and you are on probation. But what's your response to that? Uh, well, firstly, are there any uh, questions specifically about the announcement? Maybe we should deal with those initially. We must have done a good job. We've <laughs> done a good job uh, explaining it. Uh, well, I can imagine, well imagine that the opposition is interested in talking about anything except by-elections. So, um, you know, all governments are on probation. All governments uh, exist because they have the public support, uh, the public will of the people. Uh, that's part of my philosophy to government and I expect every day um, that I am the Premier, I'll work hard to continue to earn the trust and the respect of the people who uh, have voted for me and the people that comprise the citizens of the province. So, uh, you know, in that sense, uh, that's the philosophy that I bring to government and it'll be the philosophy I continue to bring to government. What I heard uh, on the doorsteps uh, over the course of the last, um, you know, more than a month, and I should say in that time I, I knocked on close to 6,000 doors in this province. I had an uh, opportunity to talk to many, many Albertans across uh, uh, these four constituencies. What I heard is that they want uh, Alberta under new management. They're pleased with the progress that they've seen. They want uh, a government and a premier and ministers that are decisive, that are moving the province uh, forward. They want common sense. They want decency. Uh, they want hope and they want optimism. And that's exactly what myself and Minister Olson and other representatives of the government intend to bring to this province. Premier, do you feel that this your election last night and, and your colleagues last night, does it give your government a new mandate, do you feel, or a new legitimacy to your government? Well, these were, I mean, these were four specific by-elections, as I've said before, but, you know, they um, uh, certainly over the course of the the past many weeks, I have spoken to uh, a lot of Albertans on the doorstep. And you, you know I'm a passionate door knocker. I'm somebody that knocks on the doors of my constituents even uh, between elections to hear what, what they're thinking. Um, I'm humbled by the results. Uh, the results were very clear. And what I was struck by was the consistency of the message across all of the doors that I went to in the province. Um, you know, the people want to turn the page on the last several years uh, in Alberta. Uh, they're hopeful, they're optimistic, but they want decisive government. Uh, they want strong government, and they want to move forward uh, decisively. And I heard that uh, everywhere I went. I'll leave it to the pundits to deal with uh, mandates and so on, but you know, I know exactly what Albertans are saying, and we intend to give them the government that is grounded in what they're looking for. You said last night that uh, work would begin in earnest today on issues re relating to right. specifically to falling oil prices, um, what does that mean? And should that is it, are you talking budget or are you talking about other uh, uh, changes that, that we're going to see in relation to that? Well, the the point that I've made and have made previously is we, we you know we face two dual challenges in this province at the moment: um, international oil prices, over which this government or any other government has no control. International oil prices uh, yesterday slipped below $80 per barrel. Um, for Brent prices, uh, the prices that we recover for Alberta um, are even, uh, even lower than that. And so this has a consequence in terms of Alberta's finances. It's going to demand uh, prudence, it's going to demand caution, and it's going to demand discipline in terms of, of how the government is administered. At the same time, uh, we face the challenges of population growth that no one else in North America is experiencing uh, at the rate that we are, with the demands for schools, for uh, our children, uh, senior citizen homes, for uh, our parents and our grandparents, the need to get the healthcare system working the way that it should. 
And all of this needs to be done in a, in a fiscally responsible way. So the Minister of Finance and I spoke at length uh, yesterday. We'll be meeting later today. And the government will continue to be focused on those priorities. Should people be concerned that, that we could be seeing reproductions in program spending like in the immediate? I, I, I mean, we'll, Alberta is, is under new management. Alberta is under good management. And uh, at this point, I can tell you that uh, we recorded a very significant surplus in the first, uh, first half of this, uh, of this operating year. But certainly, all Albertans should be concerned uh, when the price of oil slips below $80 per barrel. Last night, you kind of showed your party has still its strong power base in the urban centers. Is today's announcement about rural Alberta setting the stage for the battleground of the next election? Oh, the next election is a long way away. And, um, you know, I'm... Uh, uh, still recovering from the last uh, election, so uh, it was a late night last night. Uh, what this is about is about the Rural Economic Action Plan that matters uh, across uh, this province. And Minister Olson has worked hard on this, uh, the government has worked hard on it, and uh, we had to get the by-elections uh, behind us, and uh, we're now moving forward. And we're moving forward uh, first with the Rural Economic Action Plan because it's important to the province, it's important uh, uh, to people that live everywhere in Alberta. And there are going to be more specific announcements that Minister Olson and others will make um, that show that this government is a government that's decisive and it's a government that's grounded in the needs and the priorities of the people who live in this province. And that includes people across rural Alberta. We're going to go to the phones. Operator, please put through the first caller. Line is open. Thank you. I was hoping to uh, put this question to Minister Olson. I wanted to get your reaction to the WTO's ruling last week on cool. I know uh, you've worked on that file for a long time. Minister Ritz was kind of hinting the other day that with this ruling, it kind of looks like the U.S. is finally backed into a corner when it comes to cool. Are you confident that we might finally see resolution on this? And if so, what will that mean to certainly livestock producers here in rural Alberta? Well, this is an issue that is very important for our producers, and we have been extremely active, along with uh, our colleagues in other provinces and with uh, Minister Ritz, uh, on this file. And um, so we have now won three times at the World Trade Organization, and I would like, you, you know, you're tempted to say strike three and, and you're out. However, the Americans do have the right to appeal. Uh, I would not say that I am confident that the Americans will not appeal and continue the fight. Uh, there is a political context to all of this too because the midterm elections are coming up in the states and uh, I, I think it probably would be naive to think that we're going to get any kind of a resolution on this until after the midterm elections. Uh, and then it's our hope that uh, uh, there will be some new thinking come into play where they will look at resolving the issue rather than continuing down this track. Uh, if necessary, I know Minister Ritz, I've had many conversations with him and I know my other provincial uh, ministerial colleagues uh, all agree that uh, if necessary, we will and we should retaliate. It's not something we want to see happen. We would much prefer to have this uh, negotiated with the Americans. Uh, but it's really going to be up to them as to whether or not they're prepared to, to take another look at this rule, which has now been found by the World Trade Organization three times to be uh, an unfair protectionist measure. We're going to take one more from the phone and then one more from the floor. Uh, we'll go back to the phone. Operator, please put through the next caller. The next question is from Dean Bennett with the Canadian Press. Your line is open. Oh, thank you. Uh, good morning, Premier. Can you, um, last week there were reports that uh, Education Minister Dirks uh, effectively sort of jumped the queue by uh, ordering up modulars for, uh, for the William Reed School in his riding. Have you had a chance to look into that and <clears throat> uh, to confirm it one way or the other? And, and if so, what, if anything, will you be doing about it? Uh, well, I'll meet, I'll meet with Minister Dirks and discuss that. Uh, you know, clearly we've not had, uh, had time in the last day or so. Um, I'll be seeing him later today, and Dean, I'm happy to have a further discussion about it, but uh, he and I will have a discussion. I know that, um, uh, you know, these portables are necessary. This is uh, a school that, uh, you know, faced uh, really difficult circumstances over the last couple of years and has been out of commission. Um, and so the education of these children is extremely important, and, you know, I'm not surprised that the minister has been passionate about that. Last question from the floor. 
Minister, the Premier, I should say, which were, congratulations again. You spoke in the announcement about funding available. How is the Congress going to uh, access this funding? Will it be done through conventional FI, financial institutions, or how will they go uh, about making application? I apologize. I'm going to have to have you repeat that. I wasn't, I didn't, I yeah, heard part right. of the question, but not all of it. Uh, you spoke about additional financing available for the entrepreneurs in Alberta. And I was just wondering how can they access that? Will that be through financial institutions? So uh, that's something that I'm going to have to ask you to stay tuned for. Uh, there, there is some additional funding here for uh, cattle feeders. Uh, and uh, that is going to make a big difference to people who are in the cattle business, particularly uh, young uh, producers and people who are getting a start. But this is the first announcement, and there are a number of things that will flow from this report. Uh, when we started working on this report almost a year ago, and on the whole engagement process, what I told the committee and uh, my department was I wanted to have immediate measures, no-brainer things that should have happened yesterday. I wanted to have kind of mid-term um, uh, initiatives and strategies, and I also wanted to have a visionary discussion about the longer-term legacy type of uh, things that we could do that obviously aren't in this year's budget, and uh, you know, but, but we still need to be thinking and planning about them. So we have pieces of all of that. Uh, what you're hearing today are some of the immediate things, but there are more things coming. So I'll just have to ask for your patience, and uh, you'll hear more. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, thank everyone. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Take care. Thank you.